have to have some lemon drops. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that part. <laughs> On purpose. God, controlling Charlie. I'm the treasurer. I have no power whatsoever. Lies and mm. deceit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're giggly today. <laughs> Apparently I'm the president this month, so I'm going to call the Missing Movie Club meeting to order. Yay! That's right. It's me, Jason. Sometimes known as Gason. <laughs> Welcome to our our newest episode of the Missy Movie Club. It's a group of us friends that get together to talk about movies that one or more of us have not seen, and uh, we think that we should. So somehow I got elected. It was a landslide win. Um, it was fixed. <laughs> to, Rick, to be in recount. charge. I I believe our listeners are very excited this month that I'm in control. I'm in control. This gavel. I heard you were censured. Hang, I heard you were hanging Chad. <laughs> <laughs> that is only when I go out to the bars. Is I, 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 I thought he said Chad was hung. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh wow! It's like I'm getting ready to do another Tinder profile. If your name is Chad, <laughs> it's gonna be a hung jury. <laughs> I like that every podcast I'm on is used as a platform to get me a date. <laughs> Just the podcast? Yeah, everything in life. <laughs> Welcome to Wendy's. Oh, would you like a date? <laughs> yes, I'll take the single, please. <laughs> the beefy single, please. <laughs> now, when he's, when he's feeling a little spicy, he gets the big Buford. <laughs> um, Are we mixing restaurants? I think somebody doesn't matter. Yeah. That's rallies. It's okay. There's a lot of rallies in my life. Mm. I like the chicken bites box. Yeah, you do. Like, I've lost all control. It's only the You have. Only it's recorded so for like two minutes. That's moves. like your key job, job is maintain we, discipline. We, we've become a fast food podcast. <laughs> right. <We're discussing. laughs> And on the you know subject, there's nothing wrong with a White Castle. This is true. It's small, it's bite size though. But they you know, do they have really good. good matzo sticks though. Oh, I love their matzo sticks. Yeah, I don't know what it is about their matzo sticks, but they out of all the fast food places, theirs is the best. So, wow. Okay, well, let's talk about movies. <laughs> I'm sorry that was our Fast Food Fridays podcast. <laughs> Coming soon from the Gavin and Gason Network. <laughs> <laughs> so. Again, uh, you know, we're just we're just four friends that come together to talk about movies, and it's December, what? which is. Oh, we should have had the jingle bells. Oh, that's okay. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> that is not a bell nor jingle. <laughs> <laughs> December is my favorite month. Who else's favorite month is December? Is it me? Is it me? <laughs> it's me. Because I we I said that we were the kings of Christmas. We once. are. Um, yeah. It's huge to us. Holiday hunks. Yeah, oh, that's a, that's one of my favorite calendars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this month, when we spun the wheel, we had all of our holiday favorites that some of us had never seen, and mine got chosen. And I was really excited. Uh, this month, we are discussing one of my all-time. It is always in the top five Christmas movies, and I watch it multiple times. Is the one and only Lemon Drop Kid. Yeah, that's right. Yay. Starring comedian legend Bob Hope. And it came out in, oh my gosh, 1951. One. One. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look at my notes. <laughs> AKA IMDb. <laughs> So just uh, to move things along, I have to turn things over to our secretary to take our role. Okay, roll call. We have president as... That's me. I'm Jason. Otherwise known as Gayson. And then we have Vice President. Just Chris. Sometimes known as Chris. <laughs> we have Treasurer. That's me, John. And then I am the Secretary. This is Pamela. Excellent. What a what a crew. <laughs> <laughs> I, do I think, though, for this movie, we should have all given ourselves a nickname. Oh. Yeah, I want you all by the end to decide what your, your gangsta nickname would have been. I already know what mine is. So. Hmm. Uh, so think about that. Of by course the end. you do. Absolutely. <laughs> you know I've worked on a character already. He's got a voice and everything. So 
let's talk about the lemon drop kid. Wait, wait. No. My treasurer's report. Look, what if do I'm you have to add? if I am stuck in this role, I'm at least gonna do it right. I mean, I was quiet during my turn. Okay. Z- as treasurer, <laughs> here's my report. We don't have anything. We are broke. But can any podcast truly be broke that has friends? Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Maybe the treasurer should start introducing that we're going to try to get a Patreon or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we can... still got to put that poll out there. We do need to put Maybe that poll out there. Maybe we should do that there. soon. Okay. I don't know we'll if y'all think we should do a Patreon. You want to give us some, some manis? Yeah. Because sometimes these movies are not the easiest to find. <laughs> we yeah. had to spend a whole three ninety nine to rent this movie today, just so John could have captions. <laughs> and then they weren't good captions. That's true. Uh, they were but you did bit. say that they were very lemon drop captions. Yeah, they they were the lemon drop kit of <laughs> captions. Like, <laughs> like and, they and, ran that through a computer, and then nobody checked it. Nobody. Checked it. Nobody. nobody. And speaking of which, as the vice president and any new business and speaking about Patreon and things like that, we'd like to give a shout out. Uh, apparently, our, we have some heavy listeners outside of the United States. Woo-hoo! In Ireland and India, I believe India is oh 11% of our listeners and Ireland's 8% of our listeners. Yeah. So you know, we'd like to give a shout out to you guys. Thanks for listening to us uh, across the pond and over the seas. Yeah, thank you. And, hey, uh, India. Yeah, I exactly. Really, how you I'm, doing, Ireland? I'm, I have Irish descent. Oh. I'm 50, percent I believe, Irish, and my yeah. goal in the next five years is actually to go to Ireland. Oh, I'd fun. like to go to Ireland. I, I think like Scotland. absolutely beautiful over there, and I just well, let's just be honest. There's a thing about the accent that it's, <laughs> makes Papa excited. <laughs> 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 well, you know, as, as we're talking, I just I just had a thought. Oh. You know, we do have the ability for you to leave us a 60 second voicemail. <gasps> is that what I smelled? Yeah, my brain. Uh, <laughs> no, you smelled lemon drops. <laughs> But yeah, if you actually go to, to anchor.fm missing movie club. I think that's right. Yeah. You can click on there. And this is for any listener, including our international listeners. So if you have feedback for the show and you're more of a chatty, chatty Kathy like myself and you don't want it to be a typey, typey, you can leave us a 60 second or less voicemail. And if they're <laughs> appropriate, we might even play it on the show. Yeah. So uh, if it's inappropriate, let's yeah. be honest. I mean, if you want to say, hey, daddy, to me. <laughs> As I'm the only single one here. Or hey, mama, I don't care that I'm not single. Every time. Wow. <laughs> Every time. The she's, last... throwing off, she's throwing off some serious like yeah. hints. Yeah. And we're 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 gonna have to get a pineapple for the so front porch. After all that, to let I'm everyone in the neighborhood like, know. Hey, Ireland. <laughs> you like, you like yeah. your men bearded and chubby? You should, <laughs> you should definitely uh, let us know what you think of the show. If you want to do a voice one, that'd be awesome. That would be amazing. Um, yeah. You know, and you can always email us and, and reach out on all of our socials that we'll remind you of at the end of the show. Yeah. All right. Be a good time. So I have to ask, I want to know thoughts, because this is the first movie that, that you all have not seen that I suggested. So I want to know, what are your thoughts? Did it give you joy? Did you love it? Hate it? It was good. <laughs> it was not a glowing review. <laughs> Pamela's a few words, but yeah. they're powerful. Powerful. <laughs> okay, so you liked it? Yes, I did like it. Okay. I love Bob Hope. I love his nose. I think he has a very sexy nose. Yeah. <laughs> the old ski slope. Yep. yep. I liked it. I thought it was great. Yeah. I, I had a blast with it. I knew it was. I knew I was going to because I just love that era of comedies. I love how whip smart they are with the language. Which the way I said that was hilarious, um, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, and Bob Hope is amazing, and everybody else. There was a really good supporting cast in this too, so it was it was excellent. It hit all the notes I needed for a good Christmas comedy. Ooh, interesting. I, I would say about it. Okay, Chris. I mean, I liked it. I think the same with John. I do like that whip smart, that just rapid fire. And they don't stop. You know, it's like they deliver the line and boom, it's already moved on to the next. So they don't really even, they, they just deliver it so flawlessly and seamlessly that it, the humor just makes itself. Like I said, they're not waiting for like a laugh or they're not waiting. They're just, it just drops it and then move, moves on. Yeah, I, think... I hate that nowadays that, um, nowadays. We had to switch reels in the theater. You sound like a real old doll. <laughs> a real old doll. <laughs> that they make everything, everything is so slowed down so people can get it. And it's like, why do you have to do that? I don't understand. Like, we're waiting for the audience to catch up, and I hate that. I love the old movies for that reason. 
I think that's why I love this movie is because when I first saw it, I immediately watched it again a second time because I was laughing too much that I knew I missed other jokes. Right. And I think even today I laughed at something that I never got before. And I was just like, oh my God, that's actually really funny. And to me, it's like every time I watch it, there's something new. So what kind of... So this was made in the 50s. It was made in 51. And it is about a con man. I think we could use the con, con man swindler kind of role for Bob Hope. And he's known as the Lemon Drop Kid because he sucks on lemon drops. He is a horse race. He always has a scam. So he's a horse race scam artist. Um, my favorite is when he's pretending that the horse is telling him who's going to win. I love that. So got the little lemon drop behind his ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he ends up swindling the wrong woman who is I think she's just sleeping with <laughs> she's connected to she's connected to she um, daddy. She's in a long term committed relationship. <laughs> She might be committed. I don't think he is. With a man named Moose. Yes, with a man named Moose Moran. All of the gangstery type people have great names. You Fantastic know. names. Oh, yeah. So. Gloomy Willie, Straight Flush. No, no, no thumbs. No thumbs. Yeah. Sam Gloomy. the Surgeon. I want to go back and watch it and see Sing if he actually Solly. was like, <laughs> yeah. had no, no thumbs. thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. I love old gangstery stuff like that. Like, I love the language in it. I think it's amazing. And I love the fact... It's totally not PC today, but they refer to any women in the show as a doll. We should just go ahead and say... Disclaimer. That, yeah. Disclaimer. This movie has some problematic elements that we do not agree with, but it, it hasn't aged well. Three scenes. There is a, definitely a couple scenes that are pretty eh, cringy nowadays. I especially. don't find it as offensive as I do Holiday Inn. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. That some of the old Shirley is... Temples, you know. Yeah, there, there's some choice language in some of the Shirley Temple movies that were, True. Uh, very problematic. Um, so yeah, no, for the most part, it's not. It's just a feel good. And even those scenes that are there, they're kind of quick throw offs. Like again, as Pamela said, we don't, you know, you don't agree with certain stereotypes that they throw in, but it, it doesn't linger on them, thankfully. And they don't usually use them as a character. You know what I'm right, saying? It's not right. like a character through the whole movie that kind of, besides Goomba. Yeah, it, it's but, not like <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's with, uh, yeah. what's his face? The, the, ooh. That whole movie. I mean, you have seen Breakfast at Tiffany's, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I gotta make sure. <laughs> you never know. So he ends up swindling Moose Moran, who's like a big time gangster, and Moose gives him until Christmas Day to make back $10,000, because that's in Moose's mind what he lost. And so Lim Drop Kid heads back to New York. He runs into Nelly Thursday, an old doll who probably did some scams back in her day as well, it seems like, because, you know, she knows what's up. And he decides, after a couple of series of misadventures, that he will open his own Nelly Thursday home for old dolls and use it as a scam to collect money dressed up as Santa with uh, all of some other some some hoods of the neighborhood as well and comedic hilarity ensues it does mm -hmm. there's some romance let's just say that all. Brainy Baxter she's hot Brainy was definitely uh, showing off all assets and she was Marilyn Maxwell. Yes, yes. Actress, yeah, actress's yeah. name. Um, as we mentioned, there's a lot of to me. There's a lot of star power in this because we got Bob Hope, right? Yeah. You got Marilyn Maxwell, William Frawley, William Frawley, aka Fred Mertz. I Mertz. love Lucy. Yeah, Mertz. Mertz. Yeah. 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 Uh, who we did not know could sing. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So there's a couple of musical numbers in the show. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the musical numbers. I thought the it doesn't cost a dime to dream. I thought that was super cute. Super cute. I 100% yeah. agree. Super cute. It's a very sweet song. Mm -hmm. I think in just general. If I had kids, I'd sing it to them. Aww. Yeah, it's mm. cute. I think all the movies of those times always seems always had, they had to have people dancing and had mm -hmm. to be people singing. Because I think people, yeah. they thought it was this entertainment value you go to the movies you don't just get a movie you know you get the singing and the dancing mm -hmm. so it's always funny with movies like in that the genre that they always do they always have some sort of dance number and they always have some sort of musical number well i mean I, that's back then you didn't get to take the movie home and watch it later yeah. so but you could get the the 45 of yeah the, the song from that movie that you True. loved yeah. and and so good cross marketing well, and yeah. i think pamela you brought up a really good point like back then like movies were a I mean, they're still a big deal now because it's, it's expensive. We know it's expensive to go to the movies, right? But back then, I mean, to take a family of five to see a movie was like a mortgage payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they'd get dressed up, you know, yeah, gloves it was a, and yeah. you know, suits was a, and an event. Yeah, it was an event to go to the They theater. used to have uh, live organ players during movies so that as an intro, because, you, you know, you're coming in and sitting down. And, yeah. Um, they do giveaways a lot. Yeah. You know, they give away like dish sets and you get one dish 
Oh. Every week, yeah, they do with the cereals and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, and they do like they literally show you like the whole set. You get the dishes and the gravy boat and everything, and then every week they would introduce a new dish. Did they make you wait on the gravy boat? Because I feel like the gravy boat is the one that people want. <laughs> that well, that's you know, it's actually funny. The Christmas story, which fits in with this, Gene Shepard actually wrote other stories, and they had some of them they made into the movies. Mm. In the summer story, they kind of touch on that, that they kept giving the gravy boat because they didn't get the other dishes in. And they told them <laughs> once the <laughs> once the other pieces came in, they'd trade their gravy boats in for these other pieces. And it's actually funny. It's the guy that plays Otho from um, Beetlejuice. Oh, it's, yeah. it's like the theater manager guy. And yeah, in one scene, finally, they have so many gravy boats that the, all the, old, the ladies, because it was always the women bringing the kids, you know, to the mm-hmm. show, he gets pelted on stage by gravy boats because oh. he tells them oh, they have to wait so more. Funny. But yeah, so that's a little history but yeah no they used to do giveaways a lot huh. of times at theaters to get people to come back every I didn't, week and no they did that at theaters like i remember yeah. as a kid they did that at like the, the supermarket well like, yeah you could get like one that. piece yeah. every month they yeah release new ones. banks yeah. would give toasters yeah yeah i know no, the football business, phone actually, football phone our local casinos uh still do dish set giveaways to wow people come in and spin and if you're you know if you're like a big time high dollar value like you get dish sets and wow things like that yeah, yeah. so and also back then too a lot of times they did like william does everybody know who william castle is name the name. okay so william castle was a huge movie producer of b horror films oh, okay. back in the day mm-hmm. and he would do a lot of things that initially i don't remember if he started it or if hitchcock started it but they would do those things like smell a vision where oh, you're watching yeah, yeah, yeah. the movie and they would mm-hmm. throw in a scent or they would uh during the tingler they I would know that movie, vibrate yeah. the seats so when the tingler came on they would it's almost like a little shock but it would be like bah the tingler's coming you're gonna sense the tingler when you come in well yeah that was I... funny with that that's how they killed the tingler though yeah it's because it was in the butt to scream to scream it was to kill the that's the how they tingler. did it and yeah they would rig the seats and so they, they would rig it and all of a sudden you'd feel the tingle up your spine so you had to scream to I just, kill it I, we don't have this visual but john is dying for the tingler <laughs> And I feel like it's, we know what to get him for not, Christmas. It's is not maybe the tickler. We can... I didn't say the French tickler. <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus. Well, there goes the E. Put that E on there, this time, buddy. <laughs> oh, the tickler. But yeah, because yeah, no, yeah. it just There's kept a... going. I guess the tinkler. It is, that's what they call genius. it. Genius. Yeah, it was a creature that was on the spine, and yeah, the only a, way to kill it was to scream. A great horror. I'll put it in quotes. Movie called Popcorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you it's ever see movie. Popcorn? No. Okay. Because I know you haven't. But <laughs> wow. John, because wow. you haven't, you're scared. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can be honest. You're a little scared. You don't like scary I'm, movies. Ireland, I'm sensitive. <laughs> Anyway, in Popcorn, they show this old movie, but what they do is they do a, they show you all the old tricks that these old movies used to do. So they have where the seats get shocked. They have the stink of the st- smell of vision. Mm. They have, at one point they're watching an old schlocky horror film with a giant mosquito, and they have a giant mosquito come flying down to the audience. And so it's really cool to see all those things. So like William Castle used to do it. Uh, Hitchcock was not so much into like the actual act, but it was like with Psycho, you couldn't be seated after a certain period of time you had to sign a contract that would say they wouldn't cover you for heart attacks and it was just genius marketing ideas and so i have a real appreciation for that stuff i think it's fascinating i did not know about the dishes though yep yep look them up yeah little giveaways if you would like to give me a gravy boat (laughs) (laughs) don't google that (laughs) (laughs) oh wait what is that never mind maybe not i meant the dance i think john just made it up with his innuendo no he's stuck he's stuck on the tingler yeah i don't know (laughs) in my head i'm still watching trolls there's so (laughs) much innuendo Oh, what was your favorite musical number in it of the show? I know you said doesn't cost a dime to dream. Mm-hmm. Anybody have, there were two other songs, Silver Bells, and then that one that the, the little intro, the, to, the dolls dance to. Brainy, to. Yeah. Kind of, that she worked God, at the club. I love Brainy. I think mean, Silver Bells for me. You know, like, I love it when I see stuff like this and think, no one had heard that song before. That's such an interesting thing. Like, every once in a while while I'm listening to the radio, a song come on and I'll be like, there's a time in my life I didn't know this existed because it didn't. And that always is interesting. And it was interesting seeing how they worked this one. It played with the movie, the things that were happening. But we're so used to the song, we're like, oh, they must have made the movie match the song. But it was probably the other way around. Well, actually, no, you're 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 right. Because what's interesting about it is the song had been released, but had never been put in theaters yet. So what they ended up having to do, and I learned this, thank you, IMDb, is that they actually had to go back and do a reshoot 
for the Silver Bell song to make it fit into the movie. Really? And it was seamless. You couldn't tell that that was an added in thing. And then apparently after that, Bob Hope decided every year to make Silver Bells his Christmas theme. So for all of his shows every year on Christmas, he made sure he sings some version of Silver Bells with another leading lady. So yeah. like Aww. Olivia Newton-John or Shirley Jones or even his wife, Dolores. Aww, Aww, Dolores. 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 But I... Yeah, silver. That whole scene of silver bells invokes such a feeling of old timey Christmas that it does. It does. It makes me tear up every time I watch that scene. I think it's probably one of the most beautifully well done Christmas scenes. A lot of people, when you think of a Christmas movie, you, there are certain movies that people are like. Oh, that's a Christmas movie. There's a huge debate about Die Hard being a Christmas movie or not because it takes place at Christmas. But does that mean it's a Christmas movie? The scene with silver bells in this is what cemented this to me as a Christmas movie. Mm. Because you, you could theory could probably watch the Lemon Drop Kid any time of the year. But right. I think it's more powerful at Christmas because of that scene. I mean, you have the beautiful snow falling down. You've got the street corners with those beautiful Christmas lights and decorations. And everybody joins in. And I was like, ugh. And the subtle racism. And the subtle <laughs> racism. <laughs> but it, it, it's very, very brief. It, it's not like Holiday Inn where you have to cut a whole, yes. a whole musical number. So that helped. I was impressed with the long shot at the end. They put some money and technical wizardry into that to do the big pull away shot have it go out to be like the cityscape that was cool i didn't expect that a lot of these older movies you don't get the big sweeping shots like that unless you're the big busby berkeley kind of musical yeah. you know or or something like that like even white christmas they don't do a whole lot of that until the bigger to the very end the almost. very big yeah. moment I was impressed by that. I thought it was cool. And another thing that I really liked about this movie is the supporting cast. I don't think there was anybody that didn't hit their character mm -hmm. the way that they should have. I don't know if that's a credit to the director or credit to the actor or credit to both. Even all of like the side hoodlums. They all had a moment to shine, which I thought was great. Yeah. Even like the cop that kept finding him had his few <laughs> yeah. moments to shine. Just, I love a movie that's background characters or side characters get that extra little, because you don't see that a lot nowadays, right? Like it might just be a quick, you've got to call Mr. Johnson and that's all you get from that character, right? Like a secretary or, or an admin assistant or whatever. Like you don't get that, you don't get to see from an acting standpoint, everybody gets a moment in this. Who is your favorite side character? Would it be like Brainy or Nelly or... Or no thumbs, what's his name? Fred Mertz, <laughs> gloomy. Yeah, he was gloomy. Fred yeah. Mertz was gloomy. Who was your favorite? Uh, your favorite side character? Because like, like I said, everybody got a moment to shine. I mean, my going, I like Tor Johnson. He's like the Swedish angel. What do they call him? Yeah, the, like the super sweetest angel. Yeah, he's the wrestler, Tor Johnson. He oh, was in a cool. bunch of old Ed Wood movies. Yes. And, you know, he's always. You know, That's one of my favorite movies, by the way. Is just the movie Ed, Ed Wood, Wood with Johnny by, Depp and everybody. Yeah. It's a good movie. Such a classic movie. It's so good. Have you ever seen that? I've seen it once, but again, it's so long. I don't have remember you, it. Have you ever seen Ed Wood? Yeah, I've seen Ed Wood. Oh, so good. Y'all need to see Ed Wood. <laughs> but yeah, he's my favorite because he really, he's got like two lines because, you know, they don't give him too many because honestly, he can't remember too many, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're oh, lucky he's dead. Well, yeah. It's... <laughs> Do you know what his claim to fame is? He was, his claim to fame, honestly, was becoming the number one costume face mask selling in history. Oh. Like, of one of his movies of Ed Wood. Yeah. That his head became a number one selling mask. Huh. Wow. Um, Interesting. Good for him. Yeah. Definitely. Way to live on in infamy. There you go. I yeah. like Nellie Thursday. I really did. I thought that lady did a great job. Jane Darwell. She's super cute. She was in a ton of movies back in her day. I don't I know. I didn't know that. Yeah, she was in Grapes of Wrath and a couple of other like oh. films. I would like to watch her in less of a comedic role because I bet you she's got some drama chops that oh, yeah. would Gone surprise us a little bit more. Mary so. Poppins? Oh, she was the bird woman in Mary Poppins. Oh. oh. Oxbow oh. incident. Yeah. Okay. Good for her. Yeah, no, good good for her. Okay. Hmm. John. Uh I was gonna go with the cow. The cow. The cow. Crosby. Yep, Crosby. Crosby. <laughs> Which was beautiful, by the way. That I, was, I love that reference. Could not wait until the end of the movie just so you all would hear him say that to the cow. <laughs> but just to throw it out there, if any of you have never seen the Road Two movies, especially Road to Morocco, oh my god. It's so good. I mean, it's got a lot of like in jokes, but it's so funny and so quick. They got a little rough as they made more of them mm -hmm. as the years went on. But yeah, definitely watch those. But I'd probably say, I liked William Frawley. I liked, 
I don't remember what his name Gloomy. was. In... Gloomy. Gloomy. Yeah. yeah. Gloomy Willie. Yeah. I mean, I just, I love him anyway. He was in the original Miracle on 34th Street. Yes, he, he was. Cameo. Yes. And yeah. he was old in that too. <laughs> he just is old. He's just, that's his, his role. I feel like old. that's how he was born. He just yes, came he out, just looked like Just that. came out of the womb at 89. <laughs> With a cigar in his mouth. Yep. He's like Baby Herman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a toss up. It depends on the mood that I'm in each time I watch it because I love Brainy. I think Brainy is a very strong female character that you didn't see a lot of sometimes, especially back then. Like they were either like the love interest or the the forlorn lover waiting for. And Brainy was like, "No, we're getting married. I got ten bucks. Let's go." <laughs> yeah, she knew what she was getting into with him, and even though we made her mad, she still loved him every time. She still would go and bail him out of jail. I don't know why she loved him. I he don't was either. Problematic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that the rapey word. kiss that took ten minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, that's. I mean, she instigated that kiss. True. But then that later scene was when he was with Oxford Charlie. That was. When he that was... was a little rapey. Oh yeah, when he was dressed yeah. as the old woman. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Beasley. Well, yeah. and then the the goon kind of comes in and doesn't stop. Stop even though it. She's yes. saying help. <laughs> stop. Like he doesn't even try to like. He just backs on out. Yeah, yeah. but I mean that's oh, the sorry, boss. boss. But I guess yeah. that's yeah. I guess that's true. The boss it's... likes him. <laughs> Let's just say he got real big feet apparently in the movie, which, as I understand, it means that other things are not big. Is that how that works? No. <laughs> Nobody. No. No. Other way around? Okay. Way. Well, not that I'm an expert. I'm an expert. Um, <laughs> that's not always the case. It just depends on the gentleman. <laughs> and I use that term loosely. <laughs> One thing I did like about Brainy is that when I saw her name originally in the credits and then saw that she's a blonde, I thought it was going to be, she was going to be the super ditzy. They were going to go with that side of it. He was going to take advantage of her the whole movie. Well, and he, so, he does. So let's be honest. He, he does. does. But, but she lets him. Yeah, like, she does. Like no, she's, yeah. Aware, knows, she's aware of his scheming. Right. Yes. She's in on the joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where it wasn't just that she was the stupid one and, and that he kept playing her in a cruel way. I like that she was more than his equal. Yes. She just really did love him enough that she was like, I can put up with this until yeah. I finally win. I think the scene that made me love her the most is when he calls her from jail at the beginning of the movie. And she quotes line for line back to him what he said to her when he was running out on her. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she's like, I, ju I just want to picture you smiling. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's cold. But then as soon as she hangs up the phone, that actress hit that note. She, her face changed instantly to regret. And I thought it was a really beautiful moment from an acting standpoint to watch her be like, oh, I'm going to be this kind of a bitch. And then immediately go into, God, now I feel really bad. Yeah. That and was so, fun. I don't know. I just think it's beautiful. But I love your idea of like, oh, Brainy's a blonde. I never thought about that. Yeah. That they would take advantage of her. Because I mean, a lot of those, the, the old, old comedies like this, old, old, it's not that old. But, um, no, it's old. I was going to say, man. Sir. <laughs> sir. Okay. Sir. Sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> sir. But like a lot of them, they, they went, <laughs> they went for the easy laugh. The very, they were very stereotypical. Like oh, yeah. the one problematic scene. Yes. You know, it's very stereotypical. And so like that, the one Italian guy that's in there, they have him say the, oh, da, 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 da. Like yeah. he has that kind of stereotypical thing. Yeah. Uh, and they name him Goomba. Yeah. So, that's that's really just... <laughs> yeah. so, so I mean, it would have been Again. really easy for them to keep going that way, and they didn't. And I really appreciate that yeah. about this movie. Do you think a remake of this movie would be effective today, or do you think it would lose its charm? Do you think audiences would see a movie like The Lemon Drop Kid today? Well, speaking of which, actually, while we watch this movie, I <laughs> drew the parallels. I mean, and I'm sure there's other movies that do the same kind of premise, but uh, the movie Over the Hedge, <laughs> with Bruce Willis as the raccoon, and uh, Gary Shandling as the turtle, and it, it's almost... It, I mean, it's definitely the plot is a little different, but yeah, it's basically that the kind of swift talker, the smooth talker, the con man gets in trouble and he owes a big boss over the hedge. It's he owes the bear food because he tries to steal it from his cave. Uh, and in this instance, it's the $10,000. Um, so I think I think it could be made today. The core of the movie, even with like kind of the organized crime and things like that, I think it could be very easily made today. I don't think there's anything too problematic. They would probably make it with someone dumb like Will Ferrell. I was trying to think of like who would who would you cast in it today? I think Ryan Reynolds 
would do good with that. Oh, he because he, he yes. does so good with yeah, that yeah. whip. Yeah, smart. Yeah. They still that's even a good. In the, that's even a good in the one. Deadpool movies, he still yeah. just has that delivery. He's got that old time delivery. Like I think he could pull off the Bob Hope. You know, the mm, women that's a kid really himself. good. That's a that's mm-hmm. genius. Yeah, actually. yeah. I think yeah. he would be able to because he just has that style of comedy about him already. Yep. That he'd be able to deliver those lines similar, just that quick, right, fast, right past you. Oh, it's, that'd be so yeah, he says the thing, and then you're like, "Wait, that was funny." Yeah, like, and that's exactly what Bob Hope does. They just they say the line, it passes you by, and you're like, "Oh God, that was well, you know, that was really good." So yeah, I think Ryan Reynolds could pull that off. Fairly Who would well. you cast as Brainy? Mm. That's a, to me, that's a tougher choice because my immediate brain went to Kate Blanchett, but she's, I think, too. I don't think the age would work necessarily with Ryan Reynolds. I think Michelle Williams. Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah, I could I see think Michelle, Michelle Williams, Williams could yeah. do that well. Yeah. What about you? What would you think? Oh my god, I can't think of her name right now. She's the Princess Diaries, and she was Catwoman. Oh, Anne. Uh, Anne Hathaway. Hathaway. Yeah, yeah, I would do Anne Hathaway. Oh, that's a yeah. I think Anne would have the perfect amount of. I think she would get the right amount of edge. Yeah. Uh, and I think the most important role that you have to cast is who would you make play Tor Johnson's part? <laughs> <laughs> because I know my first choice. Batista. Oh. Oh, you choose Batista. I would not. Oh, Batista I mean, I like Batista. Time. I think he could do it. I, it's gonna be a sound a little crazy, but I would pick Mike Tyson. Oh, that, oh, that would be kind of funny. Yeah, just very few lines. Just very few tough lines. Guys. Okay, okay. Yeah, like that's because I, I guess what I bulk, if I'm thinking about today's casting. I mean, let's be honest. This was a pretty. This was a very white movie. Oh well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, so if you think about diversity day. casting, and I think it would be good to kind of show you know others. So for gloomy. I would pick Ed O'Neill because I think Ed O'Neill would be a good I don't know if he can sing we didn't know Fred could sing no that's true he carried a tune though wasn't it a surprise it was it was was... lovely too he had a lovely singing voice such a good voice but back then you kind of had to be a triple threat to be repeatedly cast it's true you had to be able to do more than just act yeah, mm-hmm. I think his was just like that comedic time. And I mean, he, every line, when he started singing that song to get people to give him money and talking about, I'm not going to lie, it inspired me years ago when I had to be a bell ringer. <laughs> <laughs> Our job had volunteered us to be bell ringers. And I was with my friend Gina and we were sitting outside <laughs> ringing my bell really hard. And I was like, nobody's giving us money. We're going to be the ones that collect the least amount. And I was like, put money uh put money in the box and then i say something about we're out here and we're looking like a disgrace put money in or i'm gonna hit you and gina's like no (laughs) (laughs) change the song get threatened people and i was like nobody's giving money has anybody else been a bell ringer before have you ever volunteered also there are much better places to give your money than those i 100 agree it was not a choice that i had to yeah to yeah. go to that so if you are going to Macy's and you do have the money for that, go somewhere else and give it to somebody else. There's so many worthy organizations. Anyway. Uh, but has anybody ever been like a like a bell ringer where you had to collect that money or any of those kinds of like things during the holidays where you were trying to? No, I have no. problems with that organization. So. Me too. Yeah. So... I didn't get a choice. I'm sorry. That's the gay. I didn't get a choice. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate. Told. I hate it because that seems like it would be right up my alley to do. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I just can't do it. No, totally get it. Totally get it. I did not have to wear a Santa suit, though. No. For the I record. I kind of wish that I would have. Cute. Yeah, and then it would have hit my face. If you disagree <laughs> with us, you can still give money to them and still listen to us. I'm just saying. Uh, there are tons of other organizations uh, that you could go out and donate to. And you really should during the holidays, too. If you can. All of us have helped with nonprofits in our lives. And it may sound silly, but a dollar can be stretched more than you will ever know so even if you can only donate a dollar throw a dollar at somebody i mean put it gently in their basket <laughs> it's a dollar it's, well, it's not, not gonna, gonna hurt. hurt it's not saying four quarters and check four, them four, I mean, j- to throw it you're gonna have to wrap it around something heavier you're not gonna get any airspeed just saying it's dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so now you john and i are huge christmas movie fans so i wanted to ask as we're in this time of christmas each one of you, what is your favorite Christmas movie? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Ooh. Wow, that's Sleep. hard. While you're sleeping. I have never seen it. I know, and it's a travesty. Let's hang out one night. We'll watch it. Yay! I, I usually watch movie. it while I wrap Christmas presents, so. what? Uh, what's your favorite? Well, I mean, with my 
tattoos you would mm-hmm. think nightmare before christmas which i do but i don't i don't always look at that more of i look at that more as halloween um actually honestly probably a christmas story because oh, nice. i love jim yeah. shepherd i mean i've read all his stuff by the way he's the one that narrates the movie itself mm. i just love his style especially when you read his writing because he's just so his use of words and just he's so quick with that kind of stuff that i really i mean there's a ton of other ones die hard <laughs> good, I, I usually will watch Die Hard at least one time through the holidays because I consider it a Christmas movie. They're at a Christmas party. It happens during Christmas. They play Christmas music. It's a Christmas movie. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's a holiday miracle, you know. Is it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, and they made it all, you know, They most of the people made it out alive. I was like, how many made it out <laughs> alive? <laughs> most of them, you know. And, you know, you get introduced to Carl Winslow, you know, the cop. You it's know, true. Because he, true. you know, ends up in his own series. Which, by the way, Family Matters. There were two cameos in Ghostbusters 1 of two people who were in Die Hard. Carl Winslow is, yeah. plays a police officer yep, in a in very short scene. scene yep. And the guy who plays Walter Peck. Oh, was yeah, oh yeah. The, He's, he was a reporter. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I just watched Ghostbusters again. That's okay. Because we all just went and saw Ghostbusters in November. John? Holiday Inn. I don't care. I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. We, have, we have, that is our one moment of discontent. No? Something? Discord disconnect. Between us? Disconnect. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a D word. I think fine. the problem with that is that it's hard to pick one. Like, mm-hmm. I could tell you that's my favorite old Christmas movie. And then, like, my favorite more recent one is the the new animated Grinch. I actually love that movie. Oh, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Yeah. I, okay. I love that version. Before we have to go anywhere, the Grinch, okay, in the old Chuck Jones cartoon, Boris Karloff did such a great job with that voice. He's got that British kind of deep. Why the hell? Would they tell Benedict Cumberbatch not to use his voice? I mean, that bugs me to know. He uses this weird American nasally accent. I, I like the movie. Interesting. I enjoy it. But it pissed cast. me. The minute the Grinch opened his mouth and didn't have like that British tilt to it, his own voice would have been perfect because he kind of has that snarky, just that he would have pulled that off beautifully with his own voice. That pissed me off. And that's, I did. I Like I said, I enjoy the movie. It is a good movie. I, I will give you that. I, it's... Uh, Chris has given the new Grinch four broken ornaments. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I said, I, I, I just, I can't. They made him sound like Kirkland Doctor Strange. And so it just, <laughs> I, 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 I that's so I, I, I respect your opinion. And like I said, I do like the movie itself. I respect your opinion, but it's wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's wrong. And but let no, me that's... list five ways why. Right. I mean, I really think about it when I ask the question. I should have said, what's your favorite old Christmas movie, I guess. But for me, it's always White Christmas, hands down. I mean, it ties with the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. But again, that's a Christmas <laughs> special, not a Christmas movie. I guess if you're going old Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. I love It's a Wonderful Life. I think for my newer one, it would be um, The Family Stone. We haven't watched that. Oh. Yet. Oh, you've, you have You have seen it. Sarah Jessica Parker being a tight ass. I have seen that. Just playing herself. <laughs> I have not seen that movie. I've watched wow. it multiple times. You've had to have been there once. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is amazing. Okay. Actually, what's the movie Steve Martin mix? Is it Mixed Nuts? Mixed Mix Nuts. Nuts. Yeah, that's oh, a good one. I've never seen. Yeah, really? Well, that's, that's going good. on the list. Yeah, that one's a good one. Have I like Mixed Nuts? Nuts. I've seen it, but again, a long time ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. I there's so I mean, you can steal my idea. I don't care. There are two <laughs> Christmas movies that I watch every year that I feel like should have been made into Broadway musicals: Mixed Nuts. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And the Lemon Drop Kid. Oh, yeah, oh, I could yeah, see where that do that good. Because if you good take the idea of like guys and dolls, right? Mm-hmm. Those old kind of stylistic Broadway image of a musical, you could easily apply that to Lemon Drop Kid. You mm-hmm. don't need that many set changes, right. you know? And just, I could see a kick line of Santa Clauses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, tons yeah, of Santa bells. Clauses, yeah. a kick line of little old ladies. <laughs> Cows. Yeah. Cows. Oh, there'd have to be a cow. And not a real, that, I would like a cow like they use in like, like if you've ever seen Into the Woods as a stage play, they roll out a plastic cow. <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> I really do. I think Lemon Drop Kid and Mixed Nuts. Mixed Nuts needs a little work, but I think Lemon Drop Kid kiss easily translate to a musical. Now, there is and a I think Christmas movie, musical. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan. It's, uh, it's not good. I've never seen a good version. I've seen it three or four times now. I'll still go see it. But it's uh, <laughs> they added an unnecessary character, and they gave another character way too much to do. <sighs> you know, I, I, I think this episode has had more strong opinions in it than any we've had so far. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Well, Christmas does bring out opinions in folks. It does. You know. Like, I think I'm going to get beaten. But Muppet Christmas Carol is always the best one. Absolutely, hands down. But I like the Jim Carrey one. I think it's really well done. I, I mean, it. it has parts that uh, I hate, like the extra action sequences that oh, make yeah. no, absolutely no yeah. sense. Yeah. But everything else, I think, is great. Like, I love I love the way they did the ghosts. I love how it's grim and it's scary, but it's not gross. Well, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. But see, when you're on that, do we go in on that vein, though? Come on, Scrooge. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Scrooge. I saw that in the Hands theater down. as a child. I love that. Uh, yeah, I, love and I, I would say I don't consider Scrooge in the same vein as I would Muppet Christmas Carol. I think of Scrooge as a, an adaption, not a true. Oh, well, Whereas yeah. Muppet Christmas Carol, well, yeah. minus Rizzo and Gonzo, who I absolutely adore and think are perfect in it, minus their scenes, I think it's pretty faithful to the original. Mm -hmm. Whereas Scrooge is. Oh, a, well, yeah. yeah no, is, it, is it's a idea. retelling. Just yeah. A, yeah. But I love Scrooge. Oh, me too. That. That's also on my list. I think I watch 30 or 40 different Christmas movies that I have on. On the DVD, kids, that's a <laughs> disc you put into a DVD player. That I watch during the month of December. And Scrooge is always one of the ones I see yeah. because I just... So good. So good. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a there's a Muppet <laughs> Christmas movie yeah. that not many people that I know have ever seen. Do you remember the Christmas toy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the Christmas toy. Oh, yeah. There Such was one, one, though, on that note, I just learned there's another one that has Robert Downey Jr. in it. Oh, yes! Yeah. And yes! Leslie Nielsen. It's Mr. Willoughby's Christmas yes. tree! Yeah. I never... Oh, my God. I, I'd never heard of that movie as a kid. It is at my all. favorite kid's book ever. Really? I used and to yeah. read that yeah. book every Christmas. It's all about rich Mr. Willoughby getting a giant Christmas tree. He wants to get it. He's played by Robert Downey, Downey Jr., Jr., which is yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, you is. can kind of watch it on YouTube. But the great story about it is Mr. Willoughby has the grandest Christmas tree in town. And he invites everybody to come to this amazing party so he can see his Christmas tree and give back to the community. But the, he buys this tree and it's too tall. So they have to cut off the top of the tree and they throw it in the trash. Well, then somebody finds it and they take that tree and it's too big for their space. So they cut off a piece and it goes through and then the animals in the forest find it and each one of them cuts a piece off for their tree and they throw the other piece out and eventually spoiler alert at the very end the mice get the last piece and they take it back into mr willoughby's house and in their hole is a tree as grand as mr willoughby Aww. yeah I oh my I have, god i haven't seen i just so saw the Jesus clips for us Mises. Oh. <laughs> but yeah i didn't know and robert downey jr watching a little clip that i did see of him singing the song man he was high as a kite when you, you watch him totally you can tell, tell. He <laughs> that was just, during his days yeah, he he man no nothing to mr you know downey <laughs> jr he's, he's probably not great. ever gonna no he's never show. gonna hear this but <laughs> I, I i loved his acting i even liked him back if you then, do but, though please show up at our house <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah his we'll, we'll that, zoom in sir but i never heard of that before like never yeah. met, it was I, one thing uh, never heard of you should definitely get the book i think the book is super cute i don't think that book gets the accolade that it deserves like it's such a sweet story about what something may be trash to you is a treasure to somebody else and then just it keeps going and going and comes for a circle i think it's beautiful so. going with that christmas theme though did anybody else find it funny that through the whole lemon drop nobody had christmas decorations except for like the main street store huh. like in the like that's true not until the very end of the movie yeah the, like, casino was then decked out with yeah for huh. stuff. yeah like, I thought that was watching it all the time and thinking, you know, I know these guys are gangsters and, but you know, you'd think they'd have a Christmas tree or have something, yeah, well, you know, something up that I, I don't true. think that was a, they didn't really do the Christmas trees in the houses early back then because, like, if you watch The Bishop's Wife, she has it delivered on Christmas Eve. Yeah, she Eve. has it delivered on Christmas mm -hmm. Eve. So back before it became normal that you had your fake one, you know, people used to get them Christmas Eve or it would be delivered Christmas Eve and you would do it and the kids would wake mm -hmm. up to the tree yeah. and the presents. So it was part of the whole package. They so what really... year do you, I mean, I know the movie was made in 51, but do you think the time frame is 51 or do you think they had it older? Because I mean, the... I'm sure it was probably a year or two before that they filmed it. So well, I, I know, but think... I'm talking about the actual, the time frame oh, the time of when same? it takes place oh, in the movie. Oh, probably in the... I think it's probably supposed to be around that time i mean clearly no like, i don't think the 50s would have been like that i think it would have been a little bit that you're talking had... 51 though like yeah, you're barely that, out of the 40s but that phone in the jail with the little you know the two piece yeah. that that seemed a little so i was just always wondering if they had meant it to be more 30s 30s 20s yeah I, I don't know that's the, what i always yeah, took yeah, by yeah. that the 20s i because I, yeah. I don't think they talked in that vein in the 50s the 50s was more like greaser talk and and the cars and stuff yeah were like the old like kind of so i always i it was just kind of hard to place exactly yeah. what time that the movie was supposed to take place in. Which like, maybe is not maybe is not a bad choice directorially wise though. Well yeah. You could put it in I guess whatever but yeah. yeah. 
But I always just took the the language that's used because I mean they don't they don't refer to women as women. They're dolls and dames. <laughs> I mean every woman was a doll and mother and mother. Which yeah. Is, but yeah. Ew. Just you. Ew. Uh, did you think of your gangster name? Oh my god, I forgot all about it. Well, you better keep thinking <laughs> when we come back to it in a second. Is that how we're figuring out roles for next time? No. You, okay. You already have something <laughs> set? Uh, yeah, and you're not gonna like it. Um, <laughs> oh, but I'm looking <laughs> forward to it now. <laughs> so, Silver Bells was first introduced in this movie. What's your favorite Christmas song? And I'm gonna say a difference between a Christmas carol and a Christmas song because they are two different things. What is your favorite Christmas song? Not carol. Hmm. So a Good King Wenceslas. So that would be carol. a carol. Okay. So yeah. That's I my favorite that carol. Then. Yeah. I think that's a carol. Oh, Christmas song. That's that's kind of a hard one. Mine, just to kick things off, was um, when the season comes around again by Kenny Rogers. Uh, <laughs> it's probably one of the most beautiful songs that no one ever hears and it's all about yeah, how we, we get together once a year and we take our pictures and we hope we're going to see each other next year and it's it's kind of melancholy but i just think it's a really beautiful sweet song if you're going kenny rogers then i'm going dolly parton yes the hard candy christmas oh, yes candy christmas. Oh, uh, you stole yeah. mine <laughs> i i actually like um the run run rudolph <laughs> I don't know if that's oh, the name of it, yeah, uh, yeah. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. Oh, yeah. I like that one. Just that's a really good one, too. It's kind of upbeat, just, you know. Yeah. Well, she stole mine. Oh, okay. It's I okay. was going to go hard candy Christmas. That's okay. You can still go hard candy Christmas. I'm going hard candy Christmas. <laughs> wow. Awkward. So that on that uh, vein, what is, your, what is the Christmas song you loathe? Like, hate with a passion you hear Red it come Shoes. On. Oh, okay. That's a good what one. Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> I hate that song. I've hated it since I was a child. Mary, did you know? Aww. I hate it. I hate it. I hate that there's 197 different versions of it, and we play them all in a row. <laughs> oh, my God. It I, Literally, there's blood pouring from my ears. But, yeah, no. I, okay. I hate that song. See, now, though, if you really want to get into, like, what I really love, though, is the South Park, back in the day, put out a Christmas album. Absolutely. And wait, wait, wait. That's... What's the one you loathe? Oh, yeah. The... Oh, the song that I loathe? Yeah. I hate the stupid Mara I Carey song. I hate that. I hate oh, that all song. I want for Aww. Christmas is all you. All I want, I hate that song. And I think it's just because they do oversaturate it. Yeah. yeah. But even then, I just, I, I hate that song, because that's, that's a dumb gift. All I want for Christmas <laughs> is you. You know what? No. That's a I, dumb. I want. I want to play Zayn for five. I want. I want a gift receipt. Yeah, if that's right. All I'm getting is because you. I want to take that back. Because that's just you know they always have people like oh I put a bow on myself and mine a gift. Oh, fuck you. Give me something good. <laughs> so for the record, if someone ever asked which one of us is the romantic, <laughs> the answer is Chris. Yes. <laughs> Dude, come on! Oh my god! Dad, I, I I get you uh, every day of the year, man. Whoa. Get me something better. Whoa. I mean, I just... <laughs> pardon my French, but I, this is the most charged episode. <laughs> Welcome just... to the holidays. I just yeah. I, that's no that... Christmas wrapping is close second. I don't that. <gasps> no, no, no I, you did not. I love that song. That's one of my favorite Christmas songs. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I mean, like I said, it's not as high up there as that, but wow. by the waitresses. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like I said, I, did, it's I had realized songs. I didn't know the name of that. It's song, one of those songs. As long as I don't hear it too much, I'm mm -hmm. fine with it. So going back to the South Park Christmas album, which yes. is super offensive, but also oh, there's a lot of really amazing. good, yeah. funny songs in it. I grew up on a lot of comedy Christmas albums. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, with like yeah. Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer, which is super overplayed. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one of the Christmas albums I had as a kid that my mm -hmm. parents, they used to just buy me like funny songs because that's what I loved, right? Was a Tales from the Crypt Christmas album. Really? What? And oh, it was yeah. dark. Huh. It was dark. There was a whole joke in there about Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, it was dark. But it was enjoyable when I was a kid. I, as an I, adult, yeah. I heard it, and I was like, oh my god, how are you not more effed up now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's like Doug and Bob McKenzie. Yes! You know, 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, oh man. Love it. I yeah. love that. I gotta yeah. hear that. Yeah. All right. Gangster names. We're coming back to it. Do you want me to start? Would it make it easier if I tell you mine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Go my it. gangster name is always gonna be Johnny Sugarfoot. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the kind of guy you don't leave alone in a room with your husband if you know what I mean <laughs> he's a little light in the loafers <laughs> light in the loafers with a lot of lavender <laughs> and 
I think they are missing Johnny Sugarfoot because <laughs> imagine that Santa Claus. <laughs> it's a good one. Wow. Nobody else. <sighs> I don't have any. <laughs> hey, that's she, your homework. She, that is your holiday. She would homework. be. She would be Jane Straightface. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking he was Pamela. That's Pits, it. That's Pits all I got. Pamela. No. No. Jane Straightface Mahoney. There we go. Now, yes, I think straight face is right. <laughs> yep. I think I think you would uh, you definitely be more of a madam, and you'd hold those gals. I'm going to use that word. That's not a word we say today. <laughs> but back then, you would have held those gals in line. <laughs> Thank you. Mine Appreciate would be it. sultry biscuit. <laughs> sultry biscuit. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Years ago, one of those is... Facebook things, and mine came out as Sultry Biscuit, and I don't even remember what it was. It was like I your feel like southern... that was your porn name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say, that's so, the... or yeah. it was like your blues player Sultry name or something. But yeah, I've, I've always remembered Sultry Biscuit. Wow. Maybe, I guess if you were a lounge singer, hood maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now coming to the stage, uh, local stylings of Sultry Biscuit. <laughs> Give me something with a little and, honey and, and butter. And there's like a there's like a really cool jazzy saxophone playing, <laughs> and all you do is put your first leg out of the curtain. But, and they start with but the it's hairy. Pants. Yes. Yeah. And they start with the Oh, he performs at Johnny Sugarfoot's club. Of one and only sultry biscuits. Sultry biscuits. Wow. Chris. Uh mine would probably just be the mouth. Oh, <laughs> like, that would be good. That would be good. Yeah, Johnny the Mouth, the mouth Baracko. Hey, over Baracko. here. Over here is Johnny the Mouth, you know. But I keep my lips shut when I need to, you know. <laughs> you can, you, you know, boss, you can tell me anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, what a good holiday show. <laughs> That's wow. one way to look that, at it. I, I think certain, that... From a certain lens. For, oh, <laughs> I hate that word. That word makes me Okay, so now ball. that, taking that, what if you had to be in the Elf Mafia? The Elf Johnny mafia. Sugarfoot? <laughs> <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Sugar <laughs> Cookie <laughs> Foot. Sultry <laughs> Christmas Biscuit? <laughs> Sultry Biscuit could still work. He could just be English. Yeah. <laughs> Sultry Biscuit. <laughs> I don't know which English accent that was, but I apologize to everyone in England right now. Yeah, that's... Yep. Oh, God. Uh, how would you all rank this as, as a movie from a scale of one to five? Nelly Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> that with five being the best, what would you rank this movie as? I'm going to give it four Nellies. Four ne We all love a Nelly. Because I'm taking a little bit off for the whole sequence where they kept doing reversing the footage. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, that it, classic of that is just top of the line. They just they special did, effects. It was it was okay for a gag, but then they ran it too long. Yeah, they did. Like, okay. So that's the only reason I'm removing one Nelly. I'm gonna go three and a half Nelly. Three Thursday. and a half Nellies. Why three and a half Nellies? It sounds good. It's a good even number. <laughs> I couldn't even think that's like even. you told him to ten thousand and fifty. Yeah, I'll give him a good even number, ten thousand and fifty. No, I mean it was good, and I'd watch it again, and it's going to be in the Christmas rotation, but it's not going to be like one of those top Christmas movies gotcha. for me. Okay, all right. I give it a four. Yeah, four I enjoyed delis. it. Yeah, four delis. Like I said, I I enjoyed it. It was good for Bobo. But see, I'm more of a Gene Kelly fan in that mm -hmm. regard, so I kind of was looking at it the lens of like, oh, Gene Kelly would have killed this role. Oh, I just, yeah. I mean, I get that. I get yeah, that. So that's why I get four. What would your? Oh, it gets it gets five Nellies. <laughs> five Nellies. Actually, four and a half, and here's why. I don't like the parts that didn't age well. That's the part that makes me cringe. But yeah. everything else, I think, is um, that silver bell scene is something I could watch multiple times over and over again, just because I think it's done so beautifully. I would have loved to have seen it in color. I think in color, I probably would have like just. It gives me all the Christmas feels that scene does. See, I so. would, and that, that's a good question. Like now that they have the ability to colorize film fairly easily, I mean, uh, what is your take? No, I think no, no, Never. I don't think. I think it lose. I think this would lose some of the. Magic. I wish movies really? now came out black and white more often. Really? If if I won the lottery, I would open a studio that just made black and white <laughs> old school movies. See, I I mean, could I, there be a series starring I, Special Agent Johnny Sugarfoot? There could. <laughs> 
I just don't, I don't, I mean, I don't mind black and white movies by any means. I'll watch, you know, but it's always jarring to me, especially like Young Frankenstein, because, mm-hmm. you know, he filmed it in black and white. And it fits the genre, but every time I forget it's black and white, and I go to watch it, and I'm like, this movie's in black and white. And I mean, <laughs> I would not mind if they offered a catalog where movies they colorize. Because I think some movies it would be neat to see. Yeah, I, I, I feel like it would destroy some of the magic of it. I think if it was remade, yeah. I would love to see the Silver Bell scene in color. Yeah. But I think it would destroy some of the magic. To me, that Silver Bell scene is one of the most beautiful scenes in a Christmas movie that I can think of that stands the test of like, if I need to say Christmas was like this, then that street scene to me is perfect for it. Oh my gosh. Well, I think it's time to figure out our next roles and our next movie. So I think we do the movie first. Movie first. Movie We've first. got our, our wheel of movie dump. So as your job as vice president current, <laughs> Chris gets to spin the wheel All right. of movie dump. Movie dump. Here we go. Here we go. Hypnotic. Oh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yes. I'm not excited. <laughs> As a current president, I veto that choice. And... <laughs> uh, Sounds like we're doing Philadelphia story. All right, so then As John our, will be the our next movie. Yep. So month. John will be president. president and to day. see who your uh, vice president is, you the the other two, because I'm going to take out of it, and you can just give me whatever role you want. God knows I have enough practice as <laughs> treasurer. But for the other two, I think. We should hear them sing. Oh no! A a classic and what I believe to be a royalty free public domain. Yes, Good King Wenceslas. Oh, I don't know the words. To well, that. it sounds like you're gonna have to make it up. Don't you cheat? <laughs> don't you I'm cheat? Cheating. I think that's even better. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> make it up. So. I, that's that's how I've decided we should do this. And then you can just give me whatever role is left over. And if it's treasure, it's totally fine. Okay. All right. Do you do you agree, new incoming president? I'm I'm fine with that. I thought it would be good. It's Chaos Miss and definitely King Winston's lost this one. That nobody cares about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Today, that's all right. I can't wait to hear Pamela sing it, especially if you don't know the tune. <laughs> We're gonna make you go first. No. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right, the uh, the judge of Christmas Idol is ready to go. Christmas Idol. Who's going first? Well, since Pamela doesn't know, you told her she had to go first. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Fair. I, I can go. It's okay. fine. Whatever. Let I hate you fight. all. <laughs> Such a good day. Good King Winslow's all locked out on the feast of Stephen. When the snow they round about, dipping his land even. Finally shone the moon that night. Though the frost was cruel, when the poor man came inside, gathering winter fuel. Hey, hey that was hey, really good. Good job. That was really good. <laughs> okay, all right. Ready, ready. ready to hear me? All, all right. right. Good King Wenceslaus looked out on the feast of Stephen as the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came inside, gathering winter fuel. Yay! Yay! I love how I even got the inflections. That <laughs> I wish we had the video going right now because you could have seen me <laughs> conducting. Yeah. Conducting. Ah. Yeah. Oh. It's also one of my favorite Christmas yeah, I, I don't. I love it doesn't that. get the love that it deserves. No, it doesn't. And now we have a tough decision. No, we Whoa. don't. <laughs> oh, Pamela did we good don't. for not no. really knowing the song. She did a good job. Actually, yeah, you hit the tune. Yeah. yeah. Which is super impressive. I like you did it kind of green ish I yeah. like that. It was very yeah. Renaissance fairy. I'm going to go... I don't know how I feel about that word being used Sorry. that way. Pamela will be vice president. Ooh. Because she was brave. <laughs> That's oh. true. It's a good quality to And have. then what role will you give uh, with Chris? I'm giving you treasurer. Treasurer. Oh! oh yay, good! Not, I got the, damn, I got Not work. for a bad job, but because I think it's time you get a rest. <laughs> 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 because you don't have to do much. I can kick back and count so my I'm, 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 giving, I'm giving you January off. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Can, More work for Now me. watch. We'll get like... A random five hundred dollar donation to the podcast, <laughs> and, and you'll have to be like, "This God, is what we're to doing." Give us five hundred. You can come on the show. And figure out a way to make it happen. Twenty bucks in, uh, well, for that five hundred to give, and you're single. Daddy says, "Hey." Jason will call you Good King Wenceslas. 
amongst other things. <laughs> or bad king, whatever you need. <laughs> Do we have any older other business secretary? secretary? I'm not secretary. Don't look at me. Yeah, but I, I don't know. If we Am I know. secretary? Yeah, that's secretary. for right now. You still are. Oh. Uh, I don't know on old or other business. I think, so. I think we just I need to. We well, uh, we really do hope that everyone has uh, a wonderful holiday season. I don't normally say holiday; I say holiday. Um, <laughs> holiday, <laughs> celebrate. That's enough. That's too much. <laughs> I mean, we litigious. could just be saying those two words. True, weird. true. Right? But you both hit some certain tunes. <laughs> I don't think either of us hit actual notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do wish you all a great holiday so season. We know that there are like what 75 different holidays that happen through the months of November and December. So whatever you celebrate, whether it be solstice or Dwali or whatever, trollstice, trollstice, we we hope that you and those that you consider your family have a fantastic holiday season. And if you don't celebrate anything, we love you too. Yeah, absolutely. We enjoy you. Thank you so much for listening. And if you need to figure out where to listen to us at, there's so many different options. How many? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many. We I can't still, count. We still don't have a script yet. <laughs> so... <laughs> Of course, you can listen to us on our wonderful platform. Thank you to Anchor. You can go to anchor.fm or download the Anchor app and find tons of podcasts. You may even find some with <clears throat> me that you want to listen to as well, where you can hear some other conversations between me and these fine individuals. But you can check us out on Anchor. Definitely head over to Apple. Please leave us a review on Apple. Uh, you can find us on CastBox, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast. Stitcher, and many others. And you can even go to our website, missingmovieclub.com, where you can find all the past episodes as well. But here's the thing. If you want to know when a new episode drops or any special bonus episodes that may appear magically throughout the year, you need to subscribe. So make sure that you click the subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. And you can always reach out to us. And don't forget, we have that voicemail feature. And we would love to hear from you, especially from Ireland. Or India. <laughs> and India. Sorry, but Ireland. I just like your accent. Or anywhere in the world that you listen to this, this podcast. This is true. This is true. Listen. But definitely leave us that 60-second voicemail there at anchor.fm. Well, tell us how we're doing. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Facebook, Facebook as well. Yeah. And Twitter. Twitter and, and TikTok. And Instagram. <laughs> We now have TikTok. We now have TikTok. We're I don't know what we're doing active, on there yet. We're trying to figure it we're out. We're the real TikToks. We're the TikToks. <laughs> we are definitely not watch that the correct generation for TikTok, but we're trying to figure it have out. Have you seen some of the people on TikTok? We're fine. <laughs> 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 we are not the problem. <laughs> but definitely follow us on all of our socials. And if you have friends that love movies as much as we do and you really enjoy the show, definitely share it with your friends. And I'm going to put it out there. Didn't even talk to the club because I am still acting president. If there's a movie that you think we should talk about, send it to us. Tell us what movies you think we should be talking about because chances are we know as friends, we've known each other for a very long time and we're still discovering movies that some of us have never seen. So there may be movies that the four of us have never seen and we would love to hear that. And if you think we should be on Patreon, you should definitely let us know. What kind of rewards would you like? Let our future treasurer know. Yeah, I don't remember who <laughs> yeah, that is. Sure, whoever is. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah, I think it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, I just like to throw out with the holidays and everything going on, you know, remember, it's okay not to be okay. Don't think you have to be up for the holidays and, you know, people, you go through a lot of things. If you do need a little holiday cheer or something, you know, reach out to somebody. Heck, reach out to us. Yeah. You know, our thing. Don't feel that you got to be alone through the holiday season because it can get kind of lonely and people get down on themselves for not feeling the things you're supposed to feel. True. So definitely just want to throw that out there as a, you know, reach out if you need somebody to reach out to or be sad if you need to be sad, be introverted, be whatever you need to be. But definitely don't be alone if you don't want to be or, you know, just like I said, reach out, even reach out to us. Heck, you know, send, yeah. us a, send us a voicemail or send us a, you know, a message, anything. You know what? Heck, maybe we'll all jump on Zoom. Yeah. And that's yeah. everybody, no matter who you are, all walks of life, no matter, you know, who you are, who you want to be, who you used to be. Definitely everybody is welcome and, uh, and included. I like that. We are a safe space. We are a safe Very space. Very much. In case you can't tell, <laughs> <laughs> the only people we judge are ourselves. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. And sometimes each other. Well, yeah, that, well, that comes with the territory. Oh, my gosh. Well, my friends, 
thank you for allowing me to, to share this part of my life with you because this movie does mean a lot to me. And I'm really glad that you all liked it and you got to see it because it's just you got to little, have a little bit more a little bit more Jason in your life. So I just want to say to 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 our group, I love our podcast and I love spending time together and I love our, our little hangouts where we get to, to, to gab together and just um, really enjoy a movie. So it's nice to watch movies with friends that mean things. And I think for the movies that we've seen, I have been, I'm very aware of people. And I like to watch your faces, especially if you know something is exciting is coming up and you want to see. And I watch. I have seen how some of you have watched the reactions of us to see if they're the same reactions that you have to those <laughs> movies. And I was doing it today. And <laughs> I, I think it's just brilliant. So happy holidays to my friends. Yes. Happy, happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. So. All right. Well, with that... I know you're all sad, so am I. My term as president is ended for at least this month, John. And there was dancing in the streets. I haven't banged the gavel yet. I still have censure power. Well, I have to start the revolution before you're out of power or it doesn't work. This meeting's adjourned. Now, I want dip. Let's dip. go get me some dips. Okay, but I want eggnog. I mean, I'm fine with that, but I still want dip. Eggnog. Can we get fruitcake? You already have one. <laughs> Hey there, my little holiday elves. It's me, Gason. Or as most of you know me by now, it's just Jason. Have you been looking for a year-long Christmas podcast that has just a small dash of... All right, well, let's be honest. It's a big old dash of holigayness. Well, look no further. Come check out my other podcast, Keeping the Yuletide Gay with Gason. Join me each month all year long with my special guests like Mrs. Claus. Hello! Listen, I'll be teaching you how to make some amazing holiday treats. <laughs> oh my, while we drink some sherry. <laughs> Our favorite holiday queen, Christmas Carol. OMG, I'll be around to teach y'all about crafting and parody plan on Mrs. Nesbitt. Oh my god, I'm new. I'm just here to tell you about holiday romance novels. Sometimes they make me get a little, you know, hot and bothered. Of course not, Ned. And each episode will feature one of my guesty besties and I stepping back in time to review a classic, or in most cases, a not-so-classic Christmas special. And just as a little note, our show is definitely not for younger listeners because we will be using some language that will definitely get us on Santa's naughty list. So join us now by listening and subscribing to Keeping the Yuletide Gay with Gason and help us to continue to put the mess in Christmas. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.